Hul Shashis and Kilvala Darha, Arishi Arfin Nirianan Ali, Kawakishan Salas Amaro, Gishul Shadro and Talish, Katanik Shamahalair Halamor, Vi Ri in the Halu Agahir and Ri Guera Halu, Agis Quig Vila Ahwarka and Ali in the Galu Hart from the Hassa, Yud Kakunish the Moyu. Irigi suasa ara ersa shishin, tan nevaja tort jara gruha yere tir. Daskal an ria hula gesturch, nil janam gafoy, agis huisha rasha halu. Agis tan a quig vila markash and a fanart and shen gafoy, na shan kohra a ha. Na choki ban, agis lasa shi keya hini, kyan huay, kyan has. Can he agus can hear? Agus er wer na haragla a lasashi in can jerna. In shen chokashi ga grian an ali. Shasashi er wer an urge ga shetashi a herk. Fasqua hai shart narshis a talu. Agus chokina quig vila marka a ragapia er hasa nurge and westi wa hrik. Kodora shut bruig harter and tear. Agus nura felisha der grian an ali. Be call a umpera and thee, because be le bre grene in ye in your east. Over the last 10 years, Ergal Arts Festival has been uh, commissioning a number of international collaborations between Irish artists and musicians from around the world. Um, we've always been interested in the similarities um, in melody, texture and timbre between disparate musics from, from, from different places. We're also interested in the similarities in terms of the, the themes and, and the, the human emotions that, that influence the making of music. It was pretty terrifying um, initial thoughts on, the, on how the Irish and Rajasthani music would collaborate. Um, we were told that the, the project would then be Irish-led with bringing aspects of Rajasthani improvisation into it. Um, which kind of gave us a bit of structure to work off and then throughout the process we found out about um, the forts being the major players in the, in the writing process and we were able to kind of base some um, narrative and composition off that. When Paul Brown, director of uh, the Aragale Arts Festival and uh, me first met, uh, in our initial conversations itself, it became quite clear that we thought very similarly about uh, how traditional music could be developed and how traditional artists uh, could be promoted in, in, uh, in today's times. Um, and uh, once uh, those conversations happened, it was only a matter of time before, uh, you know, uh, he came to India, I came over to Ireland, uh, we met uh, other musicians and came up with this idea of doing a collaboration which somehow connected uh, two cultures, connected to lands, but also connected to forts. The music traditions of the Indian sub subcontinent's always been a particular interest um, to the festival, and to me personally. And meeting uh, Divya Bhatia, the festival director, from Jodhpur Riff um, has been a, a pretty inspirational, educational and humbling experience. Well, Marty and Paul approached me about the project early in 2019. Their passion and enthusiasm for it had me hooked straight away. I have to say though, I was as terrified about the project as I was excited. How could we possibly fuse Irish and Indian music and they saw kind of people would enjoy listening to. The name of the project, City of the Sun, um, was inspired by um, the name given to the Merengar Fort in, in Jodhpur. 
but also inspired by by here by Donegal's own citadel of the sun green and wild yeah the two forts were were, were, were motifs within the development of the project from the very start the writing process was something I'd never attempted before it was we actually made up we made up almost like a short novel about two these two fictional characters souls one based in Rajasthan one based in Greenham um, and we played out this story about their yearning for each other over five movements from from dawn until dusk um, both sensing that the other was out there and the music was the soundtrack almost to, to their feelings गए साल हम आयरलैंड के लिए एक टूर गए थे तो वहाँ का माहौल बहुत ही अच्छा था और बहुत ही अच्छा लगा हमें वहाँ जा कर के प्लस उनके साथ जो उनका वहाँ का जो म्यूज़िक वहाँ के कलाकार उनके साथ जो सुना उनका म्यूज़िक तो बहुत ही अच्छा लगा हम हमें उन्होंने एक ऐसा म्यूज़िक बनाया जो मोमेंट्स जैसे सूरज उगता है और सांझ होती है तो उस तरीके को उन्होंने म्यूजिक एक बनाया तो बहुत ही अच्छा लगा अच्छा फील हुआ हमें एनी पर ही शेयर वर्ड फजल ग्रीन फोर्ड वुड अंडरस्टैंड हाउ ट्रूली मैजिकल प्लेस इट इज वर्स एनीथिंग अबव ऑल एल्स दैट इंस्पायर मी देन इट्स अ फोर्ड म्यूजिक डायरेक्टर मार्टी और उनके साथी पोल और सहारा इन तीन लोगों के साथ में हमने काम किया तो हमको बहुत ही अच्छा लगा और उनका म्यूजिक हमने सुना और हमारा म्यूजिक उन्होंने सुना तब हमने उनका म्यूजिक समझा नॉट मीटिंग द राजस्थानी म्यूजिशियंस अंटिल वीक बिफोर द कॉन्सर्ट वाज आल्सो क्वाइट नर्व रैकिंग बट व्हेन वी डिड मीट देम इट वाज देयर म्यूजिशियनशिप वाज आउटस्टैंडिंग एंड इट कैन पुट एवरीवन एट ईज व्हेयर वी व्हेयर द प्रोजेक्ट वाज एंड व्हेयर वी कुड एक्चुअली टेक इट इन द फ्यूचर That was a very special moment, and there was many more along the way. Not least was two days before up at Green and Ford when I'd ambushed Dasan and Sally. They'd just been playing on Radio Four, so I said to my daughters, Kara, Orla, and Kiva, "Grab your instruments. We're going to Green." And as they walked into the Ford, we played some Irish music for them. They loved it, and in return, they sang some songs and read a standing for us. They indicated that the girls should play along, and it struck me at that moment how different the approaches to music making are in Ireland. Rajasthan, whereas we tend to play from given notes, the Rajasthanis have an improvisation-based approach. What was very exciting and interesting uh, was when Marty, the composer, uh, first came up with his five movements. Uh, it really caught uh, this sense, this feeling of a yearning or a wanting or a desire for people to connect across uh, time and space. I think what's lovely is that I don't speak Indian, <laughs> or I don't speak their dialect. They don't speak English or Irish, and. Um, we understood each other very well as musicians you know obviously music is a universal language but i think the fact that a traditional musician as well is a different thing to you know a like songwriting or modern songwriting or something like that so there was a very um that was really nice that we we could communicate musically like when we were doing the rehearsals and because they understood the motifs of the, the pieces that Marty and Paul had written and they they had a connection with the place my first meeting with Asan and Sawai was actually in a car caravan site in Donegal um I arrived with Paul and Divya I was there with my family instantly got talking introduced to each other and we immediately found out around the same age and we both had twin daughters who were around the same age as well and this was kind of we kind of looked deep into each other's eyes then <laughs> and had a, a laugh Yeah so within minutes of our introductions we're sat on the ground and Asan and Sawai were performing and delivering some Rajasthani folk music directly to me um 
which I'd, I'd never experienced live before. Primarily, uh, I started composing ideas, demoing ideas myself, and reaching out firstly to the, the two Irish artists on the, on the collaboration, Paul and Sarah. Most of my ideas seemed to come at night when I was lying awake, but the excitement of it all. We were a few weeks away from meeting Sarah for the first time. And personally, I was nervous about it how Sarah would react to the music that we'd come up with so far. And Sarah was a celebrated Donegal musician, a native Irish speaker, and I felt, felt we'd be doing well to impress her. Sarah brought a whole new and exciting dimension to proceedings, and thankfully, she seemed to approve of the early ideas that we had. Probably what we wanted from them as well, because once we once we knew we had the structure to work off, it was then kind of like working backwards, um, knowing that their music contains so much freedom uh, and emotional playing. We kind of had to compose to give the space to let them to let them really express themselves. One of the unexpected um, results of the collaboration was the opportunity to bring the Rajasthani artists into another project that was part of the festival in 2019, which was the procession by Lux, um, whose landscape theatre productions have been gracing the, the hills, the beaches and the streets of, of Donegal for, for many years now. Uh, and it was a great opportunity for, for the Rajasthani artists actually to be part of something that they'd, they'd never done before as well too. So. That was a real bonus for us and a real bonus for, for, for those audiences that got to witness both the concert and, and the procession. So these are rings of, um, rings of stars. So we're gonna float them through, the, through Les Kenny on a sea of stars. That's our, that's our plan. The, the, um, the sort of citadels of the sun thing. I can't quite remember where that started. Yeah, and the festival was in the grounds of the of the fort, and the fort is just this huge thing that sits on a huge big rock in the middle of the desert with a town that sort of falls down below it. So you can go up in the fort and you're just looking down on on this um, on this town. And a lot of a lot of the town is painted blue as well. We normally kind of use music, sort of, you know, you, you realise that you're using music at some um, 120 beats per minute. Yeah. Um, and you know that sort of works for. For, for procession, but then I think there's other ways of doing it as well. Yeah. Um, I was listening to some of the music that was sent to these and soon there was a little video of Paul made when they arrived, they were sitting on the beach playing some playing music. And yeah. I just think of, you know, bringing weird music, bringing something really weird to let it come. The, the performances, both in Donegal and in Rajasthan, 
were as nerve-wracking as each other for, for different reasons. Obviously, um, with us being the Irish artists on the collaboration, we were very, very nervous about about how delicate, delicately we, we treated our own music and how, how much we respected the other music. Um, and any Irish musician will tell you that the, the hardest people they play in front of is, is your home people, and I, I know there was a lot of musicians <laughs> in the crowd at the at the concert, so it, it made it even more nerve wracking. Um, about about in the halfway point of the concert, we really felt the crowd was was with us on it. Um, we didn't want to over explain uh, the narrative of the concert. We, we, we kind of trusted the crowd to come with us. That you can hear a real energy listening back to the concert from from that Donegal concert. Um, there's a, a real buzz in the room. Similarly, in Rajasthan, that was it took about maybe a couple of months for that. They, they set in um, the, the kind of magnitude of that concert out there. We kind of got out there, got on the practice, and got on stage, and it was it was like. I felt like it was, it was going out to go to work to kind of represent the project as best as, as best as possible. But then the day after, walking around the fort, and people in the fort stopping us and telling us how much they enjoyed the concert, um, it kind of really settled in then, and seeing seeing how big the place was, and um, the Maharaja coming to the, the gig and the approving of it as well was, was quite important for. Them.
um, Paul had written this lovely song, um, you know, about it was like the girl kind of singing to you know the the other soul and the other fort, and um, and it mentioned um, an eagle. He was like a, you know it was like an eagle on the wing or whatever, and. Um, when we got to the fort, then it turned out that they had this tradition for like 400 years where they fed, the eagles protected the fort. And there was a guy called Eagles Latif. And he, um, we managed, we were lucky enough to get up and actually watch him feeding the eagles. And that was really, really uh, something, it was a real coincidence, none of us were expecting that. And it kind of, it really cemented this thing. I mean, it was, you know, because it was coincidental, but actually in, in reality, there was a real connection between what, you know, Paul and Marty had written and the actual place that we were going to. You know, so it was very symbolic. Like it was actually, it was lovely. It was really, really lovely. And I think that's uh, very unusual in, in in most collaborations to have such an energy born out of uh, an inspiration coming from from what is common to both traditions in in the folk idiom, which is uh, nature and how time moves through nature and how. Uh, uh, living beings exist in nature. Um, I think it's a very telling uh, collaboration and uh, we've seen it evolve and it's going to continue to grow and uh, we can't wait to see what the next next few few uh, meetings uh, will produce from from this collaboration. Citadel's a song has only really just begun. We're looking forward to expand the project in years to come Looking forward to coming back to Ireland and India and taking Citadel as a son to other locations worldwide when we can all get back together again.